breaking apart. One day we're on Twitter and come across this picture. A new ocean is forming in Africa. A 35 mile crack opened up in Ethiopia in 2005. Wait. Wait, what? The African continent is breaking apart? No way, this can't be real. Or is it? So we went down a rabbit hole. What is happening here? Does this massive crack actually exist? Over the course of the last six months, we tried to uncover the truth. Not the 10th page of Google. We decided to make the journey to this place ourselves. Ain't no way. I'm walking on the edge of a new forming ocean, of a splitting continent. Turns out the story of how, why, and where Africa is literally breaking is even more fascinating than we could have ever imagined. What happens if it does end up splitting, right, right along uh, South Africa to Kenya? What happens if it splits? Who are, is there going to be like a, a, a war for the land? Or is it just going to be Africa's land? Whose land is it going to be? No man's land. Spoken by a true American. It's our land. As day one Vox fans, this is our chance. Our own circle on the Sahara video. Well, maybe not as mysterious, but still. We start our research and come across this photo again and again. It could be Photoshop. Yeah, we that's Photoshop, bro. It doesn't seem to have obvious flaws, but we are no experts by any means. So we do a quick Google image search, and even big outlets like NBC use this photo. So it's at least unlikely that it's fake. And there's a credit for Anthony Philpotts as the photographer. So we decide to look for him, Anthony Philpotts, and we learn that he is Jackpot, a professor emeritus of geology and geophysics Wait, at the University it's not Photoshop. of Connecticut. At this point, we are excited. So we write him a message asking if he would be interested to do a video call with us. We wait a few days, and Professor Philpotts really answers, and he says, "No." Okay, let's move wait. On. Even Why would you not doesn't want wait. to talk to us? He writes. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Why? Why would you not want to do an interview like this? What, like, what are you doing with all your free time, bro? What are you doing? Mail that he is indeed a photographer and that he took the photo in the Afar region of Ethiopia. Afar region of Ethiopia. Uh. No, that's not trackable. So the picture is real, but what's the Afar region? Afar region. The crack is located here. We find out that it's often okay. called Dabahu Fissure because it indeed opened in 2005 when the volcano Dabahu erupted. This Dabau. eruption must have been quite powerful. On a website we read, when erupted, the Afar's camels and goats were swallowed by huge flame sand ash. Not the goats! No! 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 In a paper, a scientist <laughs> writes 700 goats, 200 camels, and 70 donkeys killed. 700 goats! The volcanic ash and gases caused some issues for the locals, but thankfully, no one died. Only one person was injured. But where exactly is the, the Bahu fissure? If you search for it on Google Maps, you only find yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think they have updated the coverage. Itself. And we yeah. can't spot it next to the that's what That's what I was going to look so for. So we look for a new expert who has visited the Afar region and find Dr. Derek Keir. He's an associate professor in earth science at the now University of Now you email this guy. And has a really cool profile picture on his Twitter. Geologists really be flexing those lava pics. And this yeah. time, we are lucky. He agrees to talk to Yo, us. Yo, W-man! Dr. Keir visited the Afar region about 20 times already. It's basically positioned just north of Dubahu. Or, or northeast of Dabahu, between Dabahu volcano and another volcano called Gabho. Right here. Directly in between the two. I think Gabho's about, I don't know, 
20, 10 or 20 kilometers north of Dubaku. Uh, so the Venn site is, is, is about five or 10 kilometers north of Dubaku. And I suppose in the, in the literature, the, the vent is called Daure. It's the name that's been used to, for, for the specific vent because that's the, the name that the local people use for the area. All right, such a big okay. rift might be recognizable on satellite no. imagery. On Google Maps, we only see clouds, so let's try to find it on Google Earth instead. Ethiopia okay, this is one might. huge. It's five times bigger than the UK, or about the size of Texas and California combined for our American audience. Oh, thank God. Thank God he used okay, Texas as a the scale. Bahu volcano, a little more north. Go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Hmm. Just to watch it on Google Earth, ain't it? We want to know more about this eruption so they go. opening up the vent fissure, and we kind of want to see it in real life. So we search for ways to visit it. But it isn't exactly a walk in the park. It's in the middle of an active volcano territory. After a while, we come across action tours who offer a trip I would never to the so. Bahu Fisher. I couldn't. Okay. But who could fly to Ethiopia for us and go to this place? Naturally, as YouTubers, we never really leave our mom's basements. So, enter Bali. I mean, bro, listen, hear me out, hear me out, Jay. You sign me on, I will literally go to travel wherever. Because I'm a live streamer, I can just stream it. I might never leave my computer, art director, does but... Art site regularly and has been hitchhiking through the world since like two years. Of course, I mean, I'm just in the middle of India right now. Vali is making the trip for us, but it will take a little preparation. If you travel a lot, staying connected wherever you are is a oh, ad break. whether it's video calling your family or watching your favorite YouTuber before bed. But dealing with local SIM cards in each country can be a real hassle. Wait, hold up, For hold your up. next trip, get an eSIM from Sally. It works just like a physical SIM card, but it's digital, giving you instant access to mobile data wherever you go. Sally Wait, offers hundreds of flexible data packages in over 180 countries and 8 regions around the world. And the best part, you manage it all in one app. It's super easy to set up. Let's say you want to travel around India. Right, like it's Bali. actually important. Before you leave, you download the Sally app, choose a package that suits you, and activate it. Once you arrive at your destination, your eSIM automatically connects. Now you can hop between countries and always stay connected. No matter if you're here, or here, or here. If you want to try Sally, scan this QR code or visit sally.com slash ferntv and use the code ferntv to get 15% off your first purchase. We can highly recommend it. Let's jump okay. into Bali and his journey to Ethiopia. I'm inside an Indian truck. It's about 1 a.m. There's. Does it only go to 10 gigs though? Yeah, he didn't explain it, man. He didn't explain it. Like, say, say I want to go to uh Japan. Okay, hold up. We're we're browsing. So the best and the most you can get is 20 gigs. For for a month? Wait. Okay, this is not what I wanted then. Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 2,000 kilometers to go until Chennai. I have three now listen, listen. To catch up. I, I was going to if, if like, uh, I could use it while traveling to, like, like, live stream. But uh, 20 gigs in 30 in a month, bro, I literally fly through that on like the second day. I, I can't do that. Flight to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. And since there might be more people watching than I'm used to, I might want to do something about this travel goatee thing. The 10 hour Las Vegas stream literally was well over, I think, uh, 8 gigs. 8 gigs. So... And, and that was just for one day. Yeah, 20, 20 gigs is way too little. <laughs> Let's go to Africa. Oh, dude, that's that's how On my that's how, how my facial hair looks, dude. To Addis Ababa. Ababa. Yo, I want to visit Africa. Here, Vali meets Mesganal. He's from Action Tours, and will help Vali to get to the vent fisher. Tomorrow they will fly from. I want to travel Africa everywhere. To Samara. There they will meet the rest of the team. Then they will drive with two cars so to cool. the desert and trek six hours to the Dabahu Fisher. 
It's a big bird that is flying. Yeah, God must be crazy. <laughs> now we are getting up, 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 up. Fly. Robin, fly. Robin, Robin, up, up, up. Bro, sitting next to these guys would be so cool. While Vali and Ms. Ganao are on the plane, that was a nice Mara, transition. Let's take a closer look at the splitting of Africa. Yo, what are their dinosaurs for, bro? The surface of our planet is always huh? changing. The formation of our continents as we know them began hundreds of millions of years oh. ago with the supercontinent Pangaea. It was gigantic and encompassed almost all of Earth's land masses, and was surrounded by a global ocean called Panthalassa. Until Pangaea had an existential crisis and fell apart. Okay. The shifting of the continents started slowly, one millimeter per year, and then picked up speed. This can be compared to the tearing of a rope. It may start slowly, but the last rope fibers suddenly tear very quickly. The tectonic plates can reach speeds of up to 20 millimeters per year. That is quite fast and roughly the speed of your fingernails growing. When the plates move apart, the Earth's crust becomes thinner, a basin forms, until the Earth's crust breaks. Wait. Instead of seconds, like in our visual, this process takes a very long time. It took over 40 million years for Africa and North okay. America to separate. Oh. And right now, deep down, it's happening again. Again? This is the East African Rift System. It's an active continental rift zone. It stretches over 6,000 kilometers, roughly from the edge of the Red Sea through Ethiopia to Mozambique. You can even see it from space. It consists of a uh -huh. series of rift valleys. It's currently the, um, the largest uh, continental rift on Earth. This rift system is not a new phenomenon. It all started millions of years ago. Over the past 30 million years, the Arabian plate has been moving away from Africa. The ground sank. This created the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Along the East African Rift, the Somali plate Wait, I didn't and know the Arabian that. plate are drifting away from each other. Where the tectonic plates move apart, rift valleys form. From the Red Sea, the rifting extends southward. Here, the East African Rift system splits into two branches, an eastern and a western branch. There's the eastern rift that runs more or less through central Kenya, and then uh, the western rift is... When I see it! More or less on the border of several countries like Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, and then a, a major part of that western part of the rift runs basically right through the border of uh, Tanzania and, and the Yo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Bro, and who has dibs? Who has dibs on the new continent that's going to form, bro? Who has dibs on this? Who has dibs? And between Tanzania and Zambia. And then it's Zambia. One single rift Zimbabwe. Down to roughly Malawi. Uh, the rift sort of goes through um, Malawi and then um, into countries like Mozambique and Botswana. The rifting process also created three microplates. The Victoria plate, the Rovuma plate, and the Luandro plate. Okay. Along the rifts is a lot of well, that's cool. activity. These forces are immensely powerful. They once formed Mount Kilimanjaro in the north of Tanzania. Today, it is the highest mountain in Africa. The east and west branches are very different. Mountain massives like Mount Kilimanjaro probably had a major influence on the climate. Yeah. They act as a barrier for clouds. As a result, you can find dry landscapes, <laughs> vast savannas in the east, and dry rainforests and lakes in the west. But this is the heart of the East African Rift System, the Afar region. Thank you. Here, the, the Afar plates meet. The Nubian or African plate, the Arab plate, and finally the Somali plate, which is currently emerging. Somali pirates. Rotating in a clockwise direction away Yo. from Nubia. So the result of that is that the motion are faster in the north, sort of roughly half a centimeter per year. So who has dibs on the land, the new continent that's forming? It's like going along here, right? So there's a little bit of land right here. I say a little bit, but that's a lot of land. Like it's just moving farther and farther. It's going to be its own island. How are they going to? Yeah, but it, like nowhere, nowhere in our timeline, okay? Nowhere in our timeline. But like, who, who, is it first come, first serve with this type of thing? 
Some researchers believe that a super plume is responsible for the tectonic changes right now. A mantle plume first is an upwelling serve. of hot rock material rising from deep in the Earth's mantle. They look like a scary hot mushroom. And super uh, plumes are the same thing, but like a nuke spreading over hundreds of kilometers. A super plume beneath Africa is likely to cause the plates to move apart. When the hot rock material spreads under the Earth's crust, it presses against the crust with so much force that it expands and eventually cracks open. Wherever the Earth's crust becomes thinner, the land sinks. Here, the ancient fractures and fault zones formed the current profile of the East African Rift Valley. Ooh. The Afar region is one of the hottest places on Earth. Temperatures reach over 50 degrees Celsius. And, and it has the, it has the, the, uh, the hot springs. Territory. It should be devoid of life. But it isn't. No. After a few hours through the desert, we've reached the first town, the first village, Teru. In the middle, plain deserts. So it seems we have reached some kind of tourism office and they're having a meeting. We have to wait until they're done with their meeting. Okay. Yo, Motorola's? So we just collected Adam. You can Adam. see the heat there. He will help us navigate this volcano landscape. <laughs> I think we're asking for directions. They just let him in. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It's like picking up a hitchhiker. It's a huge news here. Five years ago, there was no road for the vehicles. It was only trekking, about six hours trek. Very monotonous. Exhaustion. Full of exhaustion. Yeah, that but sounds terrible. They have off road like this. So, the walk maximum is about 30 minutes. Oh. So, 30 minutes of walking? Nice today. No way. It's a huge news. Life is easy now. Man, yeah. I was so ready to trek for six hours. No, no six hours. Yeah. No need to trek. Yeah. It's good news. Hours. You can yeah, that's very good trek. news. Yeah, that's crazy. The tour goes on. Imagine Bali having to trek. Our team have reached a destination. We're seeing how far we can actually get towards the volcano. They set up camp for the night and trek the last meters to the fissure. Young man with AKs walk with Bali. Sorry, whoever has to censor out all these weapons. Ethiopia is torn apart by internal conflicts and ethnic tensions. Tigray borders the Afar region. The brutal, deadly two-year civil war began here in 2020 and spread to the surrounding regions. Human rights violations and conflicts continue to this day. Carrying weapons has therefore become an essential part of daily life for many inhabitants of the Afar region. Oh, that's awful. Now, there are only a few meters to go. They're just standing on the edge of the fissure. Oh. Whoa. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yo, show it, man! Oh, that is a huge crater, bro. Or like, uh, fissure, not crater, sorry. Just watching the earth literally split into new parts. You can see the steam rising. I doubt it'll get across some video, but with every step I take, it feels like the earth is actually somehow hollow. It makes a hollow kind of sound. And everything. Oh, that would be freaky. If anyone around me takes a step, that would be freaky. This is. It feels like I'm not walking on stable ground. And there's this constant. You hear this? It's like rumbling all the time. Rumbling and like boiling of the earth. It's a bit scary to be honest. As if the earth could swallow me any second. This vent fissure is about 500 meters long, but it is only a small part. What you can see from above is the 60 kilometer long dike of solidified magma formed in the rift. Ooh. The six kilometer crack is, is visible with 
using some sat satellite remote sensing techniques called INSAR. Basically, it's, it's a technique that looks at the, the, the difference between yeah. um, two radar satellite images that were collected before the dike and after the dike. And is able to measure the ground motion that's been caused by the, the, the diking. You see evidence that either side of the rift has have separated by about eight meters or, or so. No, that's Valley crazy. Is standing at the birthplace of a new ocean. In five to ten million years, a new sea will form here. The water will rush through the region and make its way. It should more or less go right through where the vent is, because that is on the boundary between the, the two plates, the dike and where the vent is, is, is Bro. the boundary between the Arabian plate and the Nubian plate. For the first time in human history, people can document how a new ocean is born. Yeah. Countries like Uganda and Wait, Syria that's so cool. Coastlines. But that's far from certain. Dr. Kier says it's possible that the forces won't be strong enough to split the continent completely. In Afar, the thinking is basically that the Red Sea should continue a little bit further south into most of Afar, and then Afar will become part of the Red Sea, and ultimately you'll have a, sort of a, a much bigger link between the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea. Neither us, our children, their children, Wait. their children to the power of X will witness what will actually happen. Yeah, no but new today, the continent? Afar is an exciting and fascinating place. Dude, Eastern that's Eastern so cool, though. It's the final remnant of this rifting process of, of a supercontinent the last major rift. You know, there have been periods of time where there haven't been so many continents. There's been sort of one or two big continents. Now there's like a lot of them spread around the world. So it's quite, un it's probably quite unusual, you know, in terms of the, the geological history of the planet to have so many um, little continents. Even aside from geology, this place is special. I feel like- Well, of course. Afar people, they really embrace the spirit of this place. This place is nothing but impermanent, ever-changing, all the time, so quickly, just like their homes. Around two million people live in Afar. Most are nomads, some of the last ones on earth, and pastoralists. They often live from their goats, camels, and from trading salt. Afar does have towns and cities, but most of the people that live in the towns are from pe people from neighboring tribal yeah. uh, neighboring areas, basically, that they, they come there to work and run hotels and restaurants. I mean, there are some Afar people that do that as well, but the majority are actually living in the countryside, living a traditional lifestyle. And they have, you know, typical, their own language, which is different from other parts of Ethiopia, and they have their own dress. They, they dress more kind of similar to um, you know, people from Arabia. During his travel to the fisher, Vali met some locals and had the opportunity to see how they live. No, dude, that's so cool to like be able to check out other people's like... Time to get shiny. <laughs> okay. Goat milk. Goat, goat butter, mm -hmm. right from the volcano, a mm. little bit sour, <laughs> sour, sour butter, I don't, I don't know about that, sir. to another mountain direction, that time when it erupts, they were afar goats here, they were just swallowed by, swallowed by the fire, and they were all dead. Thankfully, the Afar people has never been victimed, but animals, their animals have been okay, uh, fired by that volcano. Every time, every day. Oh, those I poor eat. goats, man. 700 so, goats. I will expect even a big explosion around here. And then they get it. And sometimes even there is, okay, urge. Yo, what's up, man? The Afar people are facing a number of challenges, including recurring droughts, disease outbreaks, and conflicts. There's also a chronic water shortage. So Afar people use the volcanic activity to their advantage. So in many parts of the rift, especially uh, around the Bahu, there's no sort of permanent water sources like rivers or lakes. So, but there is quite pure water that's um, produced from the hydrothermal system. So what yeah. they do is they, they deliberately find kind of hot, um, vents and fumaroles where there's water vapor being emitted from some of the fractures and faults near the volcano. Vali oh. visited these fascinating water constructions. They just put some branches and the water 
collects by itself. They can just scoop it out during winter time. Now there's some rain, there's a lake nearby, but during winter... Wait, interesting! Fascinating. We just spent the last few hours around the bamboo. Okay. And now back, back to the camp. And man, what a powerful place is this. It marks the splitting of a continent, the formation of a new ocean, and much closer, much closer to home, much closer to humanity. Is it a new ocean though? The playgrounds and oasis. I thought it was just becoming minutes. part of the Red Sea. I'm so grateful that I get to be here. Probably less than a handful of outsiders have ever set a foot here. Well, I'm so grateful. <laughs> Yo, dude, that's so cool, though. I, I was honestly expecting, like, a giant crack down the middle uh, of the whole continent. But, man, dude, all of that is so sick to see. Oh, what a W video, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just curious, like, who owns the land once it splits now?